John Ritter's landlord call me Mr. Eight Rope. Uh, I'm coming buckets, I'm coming buckets. This girl's insta got me coming buckets. Saturday, April 17, 2021. Vine and YouTube celebutant Jake Paul boxed former MMA star Ben Askren, or Ben Askew according to Michael Buffer, in a fight that Jake Paul fans and haters alike were very much looking forward to. His detractors were excited to see an actual professional fighter give him the beating they feel he's deserved for oh so long, while Jakey's fans were excited to see him prove to everyone that he is a real fighter. And by now, you know the result. In less than two minutes, Jake Paul landed a right hand flush to the temple of a very clearly underprepared, poorly trained Ben Askren, dropping him like a turd in a toilet. Askren got up, the ref asked him to take two steps forward, Askren wobbled, and the ref called the fight off, giving Jake Paul the win by knockout. Lots of people had lots of opinions on it, with many believing it was fixed, and obviously we'll never know. Boxing has a long, dubious history of, let's say, various influences that have resulted in fights having a predetermined outcome, whether everyone in the ring knew it or not. And since Askren was being paid half a million dollars no matter what happened, the most he's ever been paid for one single fight in his life, it's certainly possible that he decided to take the money and run, as everyone points to the footage of him walking backstage right after with a big shit-eating grin on his face. Me, I don't know if it was fixed, but I do think Ben was happy to not take any more punches and to be able to say, ah, oh, the referee stopped it early, nothing I could do about it. He got dropped by that punch, no question. But let's talk about the legitimacy of Jake Paul as a boxer. Jake Paul is taking an incredibly non-traditional route through the ranks of professional boxing, and that pisses a lot of people off. It's effectively the only sport you can do this. In practically no other sport can you, at the age of 22, use your YouTube fame to become a professional athlete. If Mr. Beast wanted to join an MLB team, or PewDiePie wanted to become an NHL player, that ain't fucking happening. They couldn't get six months of training and be on a team just because they're famous. If you didn't start at the age of, like, six years old, you don't have a hope in hell. And that's what pisses boxing purists off about Jake Paul. Someone like Mike Tyson, for example, was an amateur at the age of 15, boxed in the Olympics and won a gold medal, then, when he turned professional, paid his dues fighting and defeating 27 men before being awarded a title shot. That is what boxing purists believe make a legitimate professional fighter. Not at the age of 22, with no previous boxing experience whatsoever, fighting a YouTuber, a retired NBA player, and a retired mixed martial artist who was never a good striker to begin with, being handed a title belt that looks like it was in the same section as the WWE toy belts at Walmart, and then calling yourself, these are Jake Paul's words, one of the biggest names in the sport. But, you know what's fucked up? Jake Paul is... Whether you want to admit it or not, at this very moment, one of the biggest draws in boxing. What does that say about boxing? <laughs> you could draw your own conclusions. But he announced that his fight had 1.5 million pay-per-view buys. In the United States, in the last six years, only three other pay-per-views have managed to have more pay-per-view buys. And Jake Paul fought on one of those, too. Mayweather vs. Pacquiao in 2015. Mayweather again versus Conor McGregor in 2017, and Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. in their retirement home punch-up in 2020. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, Conor McGregor, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., Jake Paul. Cue the Sesame Street, one of these things is not like the other song. But if traditional boxing fans are pissed off about that, well, take a fucking pick at who or what to blame on this one. The fact that boxing hasn't really evolved in decades, or doesn't do a very good job of marketing to a wider audience, or boxing fans for not supporting other pay-per-views, or the fact that the sport is kind of boring when it's a pure technical display of the sweet science and not two people trying to take each other's heads off. In fact, Triller, the site that broadcasts the Jake Paul Ben Askren fight thinks that boxing is so boring that in four hours they showed only four fights totaling less than 45 minutes of actual fighting. 
Then, seven musical performances, at least 10 minutes of total footage throughout the night of Snoop Dogg smoking weed, and a fucking slap fight that was refereed by pro wrestling legend Ric Flair. The pay-per-view was a fucking circus, with four pretty piss-poor boxing matches thrown in. And 1.5 million people paid 40 US dollars to watch it. And you know who probably loved it? Jake Paul's audience. You know who didn't care that the actual technical quality of the boxing throughout the night was hot dog shit on cold meatloaf? Jake Paul's audience. And you know who boxing wants? Hell, you know who every sport would love to have? Jake Paul's audience. Dude has 20 million subscribers on YouTube, 15 million followers on Instagram. And when the popularity of your sport has been plummeting for decades, and you got a guy with a young audience who's actually interested in your sport, and most of your audience is 50 years old and can't stay up past midnight to watch fights anyway, you do whatever the fuck you can to get a piece of that action. When you cater to diehards only, there's a real possibility that what you do will die hard. That's a real problem boxing has, and one that it would like to fix. Is the answer Justin Bieber and Saweetie concerts? I don't know. But boxing events love to jerk themselves off over the celebrities they attract. Always have, even back in the good old days. So, why not put the circus clowns to work on your show? Now, I seriously want to take myself out back and give myself a solid shit kicking for this. But I have to defend Jake Paul a little here. From what little we saw, he's actually improved. He had his hands up, he threw combinations, his footwork looked all right, he's starting to look like a real boxer. Not a great one or anything, I still believe that a professional boxer in his weight class, who rose through the ranks the traditional way, had an amateur career, all of that, would still beat him. But he's learning. And what he's doing? Shit. Every fucking boxer did this. Name a boxing legend and go look at their box rec page. George Foreman's first 16 fights took place in the span of a single year, back when that kind of shit would happen. Eight of those 16 fighters did not have a winning record, and only one of them had only a single loss. He was not fighting the best of the best at the start. Mike Tyson, those 27 guys he fought before he got that title shot, many of them already had 5, 6, 7, 9, 16 losses before they fought Tyson. The great Muhammad Ali fought a guy who was 15 and 9 in his first professional fight. It's called padding the record by fighting cans, journeymen, gatekeepers, the guys who will never be at the top and are just meat to throw to those guys on their way up the mountain. And in the modern day, you know how much you make doing that? The California State Athletic Commission sets a minimum wage of $100 per round. So, for a six round fight, Jake would make $600. He made $690,000. That's right, he's still such a fucking child that he had to have a 69 in there. <laughs> but $690,000 for his fight, plus a percentage of the $75 million the pay-per-view generated. If Jake Paul is hoping to win the respect of boxing purists, that's a fight he will always lose. After the fight, he asked this. I don't know how many times I gotta prove myself, but this is for real. I believe that Jake Paul believes he is a real boxer. But to prove that to boxing purists? Go back in time about 10 years, start an amateur career, win a Golden Gloves, try and qualify for and win a national amateur championship, make it to the Commonwealth Games or the Olympic qualifiers, and do all of that out of pocket, never earning a dime. And then, after 30, 40, 50 or so fights, turn pro and fight other actual professional boxers who are just debuting or journeymen for that $100 a round I mentioned a minute ago. Doing that for about 15, 20 fights or so before taking some fights that will actually earn you four, maybe even five figures. Do you want to do that? Of fucking course you don't. Who the fuck would when you could do it this way? You'll never have the respect of boxing purists. As I just said, that's a fight you can never win, no matter how many dad bod MMA fighters or old former pro basketball players you slap around. But you also shouldn't care, because do you want to know how many legendary boxers made $690,000 plus a percentage of the pay-per-view and gate in their third professional fight? 
None. Not a single one. Floyd Mayweather didn't make sweet dick all for fighting Jerry Cooper. Manny Pacquiao probably got a sandwich and some beer tickets for his fight against Rocky Palma. Mike Tyson might have got gas money for knocking out Don Halpin. None of these men were rolling around in a pile of money on their front lawn after winning their third career fight, even if some of that money was $1 bills. You're always going to be the guy that your fans, who know nothing about boxing, will want to see win, and that hardcore boxing fans, all 50 that are left in the world, will pay money to hopefully see your very punchable face get punched in, and you benefit either way. But Jake, hold your head up high. You headlined a pay-per-view that had 1.5 million buys. You've earned hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars fighting at this point. And you just got your very first sexual assault allegation. Congratulations. You truly meet all the requirements of becoming a real professional boxer.